How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a legend for anti-mage and we're gonna see how we can help you out, bro. Let's do this. So I will say just from the get-go, I don't know who you're recording with here exactly, but this draft is beyond greedy. Um, and like this draft would never fly um, in my games. Like you guys would get absolutely shit canned in like 20 minutes flat. Sniper, if he doesn't have a good lane, he's just a walking piece of meat. Anti-mage, obviously, is anti-mage. Takes forever to come online. And then Bristle, also, if he has a, sh has a shit lane, he becomes, like, he just, he has to sit in the jungle and farm AFK forever. So this draft is, like, crazy greedy. And uh, just three heroes that need way too much farm. Which is something to think about in the draft. I don't know in what order everything was picked. Definitely get the stick versus wand always, or just go full wand. With anti-mage, you can definitely go full wand because you have 62 uh, attack damage. Uh, yeah, Mars and a gyro, you definitely needed a stick here. This is the worst uh, Wraith Ban lane, in my opinion. So yeah, always like this, uh, if you're on Dire. Make sure to bring the creeps over here and then walk in circles with them, or up here, so that the range creep gets out of tower range. And you can aggro onto the ranged and kill it, so. Which Doctor should have blocked this. Or if you knew it wasn't blocked, he should have been there on the pull timers contesting the pull. All right, so yeah, again, I think you could have pulled it up here. Okay, definitely don't do that. Um, do not auto their range. Definitely don't ever do that. Um, just creep equilibrium stuff, because like you're playing anti-mage, you should absolutely, honestly, I think you should dumpster this lane against the Mars. Um, like I would just get a value point in counterspell and then control the wave properly in front of your tower and then right click him like constantly take all his mana away especially because you have the the witch doctor like you guys could have uh, destroyed this lane i think so yeah like these need to be over here further over here like cut one of these trees i think it's this one or this one so this one or this one right here and then aggro onto your range and then leave the range alive for sure like this is just that's terrible it's gonna push back into mars now and then it gets dragged into your tower somehow i think mars pushes the wave or something yeah now it's under your tower again. This this wave comes under your tower. Now it's going to push into him again. It's just uh, the equilibrium control is really bad in this lane right now. And then you just missed a bunch of creeps running at them, which you should not be doing. Like your anti-mage, you need gold, but everything. Walking at them and burning their mana is just to keep them away from your creeps. If they're not contesting your creeps, then you hit creeps. But um, I would do the CS trainer and practice keeping the equilibrium like right in the center of the river or whatever it is. For any of you carry players out there, a very helpful thing to do. Just literally like sit there with the and try to every CS and keep the wave static in the middle of the thing. Yeah, you, you gotta stop doing that. I don't know why you're doing that. That's crazy. Just a weird lane. I don't know what to say. I mean, you're not getting like punished for it because Mars is not being as aggressive as he could be. But it's also not good. You're just like, you can't, you're not strong enough to farm the jungle yet, yet you're constantly pushing the wave into his tower. So Mars is getting free uncontested, like every wave. Like every single wave free uncontested. It's just like really not good. Um, that's good you got a value point in counter spell, I will say. Great job there. Yeah, they pull again. Witch Doctor's not contested. Like he's not, the pull time's not on his radar. That's what I'm saying. I can tell. He needs to be like there contesting it or something like that. Like it is your Witch Doctor's fault, but also he might die trying to contest that. So part of the reason you can't scout it or safely go here to contest the pull, or the reason uh, I think it even got pulled in the first place, I'd have to think about that, but is because of your creepy equilibrium stuff. So like, you would have been in a way better position to contest this with your Witch Doctor if you were controlling the wave properly. Okay, you have your treads. Yeah, now you're like strong enough to go in between wave and jungle, so... Why are you so scared of this Mars? Like, you haven't right-clicked Mars at all in this lane. This is criminal. He's a melee against an anti-mage. This dude should have no mana all lane. Like, just straight up. The wave should be here permanently. And he should have zero mana. Just playing, like, way too passive. Mars should... This should be a really, really fucking hard lane for Mars. Especially with Witch Doctor. And Gyro does nothing to you if you get a value point in Counterspell. Your Aggron creeps under tower again. I mean, I guess in this situation is fine, because I'd say by the point you have treads, you really are just in farm mode. Good kill there. Could you make it out? But like, yeah, you could have been doing that to him all lane. Like, actually. There's no reason you had to start doing it now. Radiance middle tower I, you need to do this in the reverse. You need to TP straight to base and then walk out. So that your TP comes up cooldown sooner and then you can use it to TP to the other side of the map. Radiance Once they press tower. you away. 
You need TP straight back first. And this goes, this is almost, this is true almost across the board for any role. That if you're, if you're low like this and you need resources, then you need to TP straight back and then walk. Especially because you have blink on anti-mage. Again, I don't know why you're so scared. Like, who are you scared of? You see Tiny. It's a gyro. Why are you scared of gyro? Maybe you're afraid of the lion? Was lion missing? Maybe you saw something I didn't hear. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so you knew the lion was there. Okay, yeah, I get that. Like right now, yeah, still makes sense to play here. You're, it's under tower. Okay, so you do know the lines there. So I guess it's not as bad as I thought. I get it. You're playing safe. But if you know the lines here, you gotta book it. Like uh, that's my bad. I missed the line here. But like, you should not be just walking back and forth in front of tower here. You're just wasting so much time. Like, if it's not safe to be here, go hit creeps. You're in creep hitting mode, and if you can't do that efficiently, like, you need to go somewhere else. Also, another thing like. Okay. Good Evans. Good that you backed out there. Okay, this is not a good... This is an awful TP. You, the tower is not even gone yet. Um, Bristle can farm this. Like, he's level 9. He can get soul experience and farm this and create real pressure. And here you're throwing two, two cores on the side of the map. When you could be farming all three, like, this whole half. Now you have two farming bot. Um, one farming here. Um, no one farming mid. And no one farming top. So this is a, a straight up grief TP is what I'm saying. To your course. Or to your core. Um. Yeah, this is not good. You're farming the same spot as your offlaner. Then he goes to go ancients. Okay, whatever. Like, you need to, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna you need to coordinate this ahead of time. Like send bristle mid, sniper top, and then you bot or something like that. If you are able to communicate with your team. Um, because bristle could take uh, threat in mid on his own, but like yeah, that you're just giving up map pressure. It's very bad. And now you're not farming a lane uh, when you could be, potentially. The lane creeps top. All that being said, you have an okay battle for your timing. Um, you could have had it probably 30, 40 seconds sooner, I would say. If you played the lane better. And you, like, didn't waste so much time walking circles. Didn't do that TP bot. Just weird. Yeah, Bristle has... He can go mid. He can farm this. He can farm all this. And then he can shove mid in hard. Instead, you throw co two cores on the same side of the map again. Two greedy cores. Sharing experience in gold. This is like, I, so bad. So bad. Um, again, I don't know if this is on you or Bristle. I think it's a combo, but this is like atrocious. And then both of your sports are playing here. Your sniper's playing here. This is like the most passive space losing setup ever. But your supports and your sniper, your sniper's your mid. Like, he's level 12. He's a pretty high level. Like, you have level 6 Witch Doctor. Um, Voodoo Switcheroo, like you guys are strong. You're playing so passively. You need this tower gone so that it opens up the map to like make more plays on mid and stuff like that. And you could farm here while your your team does plays uh, elsewhere on the map. But like just just playing super passive for where you're on the game, in my opinion. Like Bristle is pretty strong too. He's not weak by any stretch. Um, and then if your Venom was like playing bot with the uh, uh with Witch Doctor. Then these camps would be, or the, the mid wave would be available to you. Now you have this awkward period where you took ancients and there's no creeps anywhere. Um, so Bristle took bot, that's good. Yeah, you should have like 120 CS right now in my opinion, at least. If you were farming uh, properly, in my opinion. It's just so awkward, like your, your decisions have led you to be in this awkward, scared place the whole time, basically. Some of it's your decisions, some of it's your teammates' decisions about how they're playing the map, but... Like right now, this is awkward as hell for you. Your whole team is playing so passive. Nobody's trying to give you information about where they are. You're all huddled mid. <laughs> You're just tossing up farm in space. Like actually straight up. This is, nobody's trying to defend that tower, or get information or go make a smoke play or anything. And sometimes this just happens. Part of it's definitely your decision making and your play in the lane. Part of it is your teammates. Um, these are what I call despair games where nobody seems to want to do anything. But that's also because they don't know what they should be doing. So if you do know and you learn the game, you can give the make the right calls. I don't know why you're looking at this. No, please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. Oh no. Yeah, this is atrocious, dude. Your team is finally doing their job. Their grouping is three. Um making space and you're hitting ancients. This is like last resort, if nothing else is safer. This is pressure. This is space. This is information. Your creeps push into their tower. Somebody goes to defend it. You have info on who's where. 
Um, this does nothing for your team. This gives Jug, uh, more chance to catch up. Like, Ancients are lower value than a creep wave, you know, like, all that stuff. It's really not good. You got there eventually, but this should be pushed up there tier 2. You should have been, like, fucking beelining it for this wave, pushing it, cutting this wave, blinking mid, cutting that wave too, right here. That's how you have to play on anti mage if you want to win games. And, like, now you're getting the right idea, it's just way too late. Things are going poorly for your team. And again, part of that's, like, how passively they played the map, but you're not doing them any favors with the way you've been uh, playing the map either. Yeah, and this is the classic, like, yeah, your, your whole team is dead, you're farming. If I'm one of your teammates this game, I am despairing. This is a good fight to TP2. 100%. Good job. Good job, good job. Um, this is Roche. This is free Roche. Right now. You have a Sniper and a Bristleback. And a Witch Doctor. And nobody thinks about it. No Mars. You have a Bristle who's decently fed. You have a Sniper with Maelstrom, 4 Staff. You, you see Jug bot. You see Jug bot, so Jug can't Omni you. That's a free Roche that you, you all just passed up. Um, so you opt for the Ancients, which is like... Eh, low value. Compared to what you could have been doing. Bristle's chasing people down. I think it's good that he's farming there, to be honest, because he can farm against the Jug. You can't, really. Um... But you, you should have taken Roche, like, after that fight was won. You need to be looking at stuff more, too. Like, you're not looking around the map to check items. Um, TPs. Like, you didn't check the Mars in the way before you just blinked onto it. You're just, like, very kind of autopiloting and not thinking ahead of, like, where you need to be. Just kind of like, okay, where, where's a creep wave? And kind of going towards it. Kind of zombie-like. You should be looking at this fight mid to see what's happening. Um, teeping here was not fine, though. Just more time wasted when, like, Mars and Jug are dead. You could have taken this tier 2 or cut more waves, like, do 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 Like, if, if their people are dead, dude, you can make so much space, and again, you're hitting Ancients. It's complete disaster. Um, like, good you dodge the fight, but you need to keep dodging it. Like, it's just the Mars. Like, the Sniper's not going to die, your tier 2 is not going to die. Think about the amount of creeps you could have got on this side of the map if you didn't TP. Good players would rush right now because they'd see you don't have a TP in your inventory and they would go take rush from under your nose. Um, and, and you scanned them in rush, took you way too long to react to it. Like, you should have been... Like, yeah, Venom... Just drop Death Ward, Venom ulti in there, like... With you there, you could have easily picked one of these supports. Or killed the Mars. He doesn't have BKB yet. You're a threat to him. Um, yeah, you're, you're just, like, not paying attention to what's going on, really, at all. You should have been communicating with your team more and as soon as you saw that scan... Go red, you have to be there because you know they're in Roche. You have to try to contest that. Team, you have a good team to contest as well. Like, you can jump on the back lines um, and blow them up when Mars goes in. You have a bristle as well. Like, like you've been only farming and you still have less than 10 creeps a minute. And you've simultaneously had zero impact on the game. Nice. Good creep cut. I need to watch this in real time. Another creep cut. This is a value cask, by the way, that set that up. Drug sells Aegis and ulti. So if you go in too soon, you're going to die. Mars already used Arena. Lion can't go up there without dying. I don't know what you're so scared of. This gyro is free, free, uh, free gold. The gyro standing up there is free gold. You blink him and kill him like two seconds. You're just doing actually nothing. You probably have like sub five thousand euro damage or something. Again, you don't have a TP, so you cannot get back to help your team. Oh, this is not. This is so bad, dude. I'm sorry, but this is like, this is like bad with a capital B. You lost a tier 3 because you didn't have a TP, and then you went in and immediately died. This is- you cannot do this if you're an anti-mage player. You just cannot. Yeah, you can't do this. You literally can't. You should have checked Lion's mana, seen that he had enough, you ulti him here, he dies instantly. You should have blinked in, ulti this guy? I don't know what the radius is. Radius 500, don't know if that would have clipped Gyro. Let's see. No, 
But you should have blinked on this guy. Removed him is the problem because he's the only stun that you can't respond to. Um, if you don't, if he, if you don't block it with a counter spell. And again, you still don't have a Scotty. Like this is this is criminal. I'm not trying to be a dick here, but you have accomplished like literally nothing this entire game. When you easily like you could have soul carried this, but you don't have gold. You haven't had an impact in fights. Like it's anyway. Big things is you need to work on your TP usage. Um. You, if you're low on mana and you're going back for resource, or if, if you're low in lane going back for resources, you need to TP back right away. You have to work on to lane and using TP to TP back to fights at the proper time. And you haven't, you didn't fight with any of these power spikes. Like with Manta, you didn't go on the supports, um, all this stuff. You didn't let Bristle tank spells and then once the spells are down, you didn't blink in on anyone crucial and blow them up. Like you just, you haven't contributed anything to this game. And then you were too slow in catching waves that you could have cut like early earlier here when you could have pushed this in really hard. You weren't. And it just... You made your team 4v5 the entire match. And yeah, again, this tiny... Okay, anti-mage dies to single target physical. Tiny ags is only single target physical. You cannot commit blink onto people with tiny sitting in the background. Yeah, this game is completely on you, my friend. I'm not gonna lie. Not completely, but like... You could carry this so easily. And <laughs> sorry if I came off a little harsh this one. Part of it is probably personal allergies to anti-mage as a hero. Because I can't count the amount of games where I've been like the sniper, the bristle in this situation. And I just like, it feels like a 4 on 5. But I believe in you. You can still easily play anti-mage and get a ton of MR in your bracket with him. You can be that anti-mage member that carries every single game he's in. If you apply some of these tips and tricks. So... Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, thank you so much for hiring me to do your coaching. And I will see you next time. And good luck in your games, my friend. Peace.